journalist. And um, after this session, we'll go to 115. We're going to be having lunch in here, so you could just stay in your seats for lunch. And that will be followed by um, uh, two more sessions. We end around 4 o'clock. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name's Andrew Keane. I'm um, a run after TV, which asks the question, what comes after television? Um, I'm also the author of an upcoming book called The Cult of the Amateur, which is out in June. Uh, so uh, th this is a really interesting panel. I, I talked to everybody beforehand. I had long conversations about what search is or what video search is. And I'm still not sure if I have the answer. Indeed, I'm not sure if there really is an answer, which may be the really interesting part of this conversation. What I thought we could do um, to warm ourselves up is, and for you, for the audience, to, to learn more about what these people, who these people are, and the, the kind of products they have, um, as a way of introducing themselves, um, that they, they might also have a, a preliminary at this question of what video search is or isn't, how they would or, or indeed wouldn't define video search. So why don't we start with uh, Chase uh, Norlin of uh, Pixies, uh, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Pixies. Chase, why don't you start? Thanks, Andrew. Well, in a nutshell, Pixie is a, a media search platform that enables any website to get uh, in the photo environment search business essentially overnight, uh, given that image and video search are the, are the fastest growing search categories on the web today, you know, our business model is uh, putting everybody in that business. You know, we said, so, you know, why should Google, Yahoo, uh, MSN, uh, you know, and Ask Jeeves to some extent, why should they control uh, the destination image and video search business? Uh, if those are the fastest growing categories on the web, it seems logical that that should be in the hand of every website. Uh, so that's our business. Um, you know, in terms of how we look at, you know, video and video search, um, we're actually really not even a video company. Uh, we're a massive aggregator, uh, organizer, and distributor of thumbnail material. Uh, and thumbnails do uh, one thing really well on the web, they generate lots of clicks. So that we look at it from, you know, when we look at video, we don't look at it from a, from a, from a playback point of view, from a, from a consumption point of view. We look at it from a, from a thumbnail point of view. Um, I'm going, uh, so, so Mark uh, Pasquarella is the uh, president and CEO of, of GoToIt Media. They have another definition, I think, of, of what search is. So uh, Mark. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mark Pasquarella. I'm the president and chief executive officer of GoToIt Media. GoToIt, for those of you that aren't familiar, is a digital media platform enabling what we consider to be an entirely new class of on-demand video products across broadband, mobile, and cable on-demand video. And, and we're doing that by merging a new layer of metadata that's very granular and descriptive with the video file such that it can be organized and presented in a fashion that makes it very simple and easy for the consumer to find what he or she is looking for. And so with that as background, go to its view of video search is, is one that, that uh, would, would call out that term as being almost oxymoronic. I video search is, is truly applicable to how consumers want to engage with video content. As we look at the marketplace, uh, consumers have told us time and time again that the, the activity is really more about video discovery and being able to quickly and easily get to what they find to be most interesting versus truly conducting a search. So I think so much of the activity that we've seen to date has been around taking a text-based paradigm and merging that to the video world versus creating a new and different expressly for the purpose of allowing for uh, precise search and navigation of video content. Thank you. Uh, Tim Tuttle, his official uh, title is VP at AOL uh, Video. He runs AOL Video, but he, in a sense, backed into AOL because he, he brought his, uh, his own video search company into that. So, Tim, perhaps you can tell us not only about AOL Video, but how you got into the business in the first place. Okay. <clears throat> sure. Uh, so, as Andrew said, my name is Tim Tuttle. As president of AOL Video. Uh, formerly, I was a founder and CEO of a company called Truvio, which is a company we started three years ago specifically to improve the quality of video search on the web. A year ago, we got acquired by AOL, and uh, over the past year, we've taken that search technology 
and uh, we've extended it to power many of the, um, the web's most popular video destinations, um, not just all the AOL properties. So right now our search engine powers websites that reach over uh, 37 million unique visitors every single month. That's the largest uh, video search engine that exists today. And when we, at, <clears throat> when we talk about video search, what we mean specifically at AOL is given the, the complete universe of video content that's on the internet, of which there are hundreds of millions of videos spread across hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of websites on the internet today. We want to build a tool that allows anyone to be able to find exactly the video they want to watch, no matter where it's located, and be able to watch it right. And so um, that's, that's the product that we have today. That's the product that we're building. Um, something, so in a sense, what we're building is, is the same thing that Google does for web search, but doing it for video. But I want to be very clear that um, video search is a very different animal than web search. Video search is, um, as a technology problem, far more difficult and complex to solve. Um, and the way that people use video search engines, expect out of video search engines, is also different than when they get in text search engines. In text search engines, people spend a lot of time refining keywords, and they use it for research and finding specific pieces of information. For video search, that component is also there, but people also use it to browse through video, to find if they have spare time to kill and they want to, um, they don't know what they want, but they want to be presented with interesting things. That's another piece of video search, so. I think Tim's definition is probably the most conventional. I don't mean that critically. It's, it's the, the one that most of us can grasp, and perhaps his search engine is the most ambitious, although it's also fair to note that we, we were going to have Ch uh, Churanga from uh, Blinks on the panel as well. He had to pull out in the last minute. So, so there are other, perhaps more conventional, video search, quote, video search engines out there, apart from uh, uh, the, the Truvio one, which now goes under the, the AOL brand. Um, Zhao is the Chief Technology Officer, Content Security at Thompson. He brings another perspective and uh, a bundle of experiences and knowledge to this uh, video search equation. So, Jian, do you want to introduce yourself and define what you mean by video search? Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, basically, as uh, Andrew mentioned, I'm a CTO of the Thompson Action is uh, Software and Technology Solution with a major focus on content security. So, we provide solutions to um, secure the content uh, for the entire uh, life cycle, uh, including technologies, uh, for example, the forensic markings, uh, content protection for workflows, and uh, video f uh, fingerprinting for content filtering. So that's the topic I'm talking about today for the, at this panel. Uh, so I'm external to the conventional video search and. Uh, uh, so in my definition of video search is a solution or technology um, to en enable users to find out what they want. Uh, Paul uh, Martino is uh, CEO of, of, of another company, Aggregate Knowledge, which is, which is trying to define or refine, redefine what video search means. So Paul, perhaps you can explain by what you mean by the term. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, we actually don't engage in the activity of search when we're looking for video. We very much engage in the activity that Mark talked about, which is discovery. If you're actually trying to find a video tonight, and you're in the hotel here at the Roosevelt, and you're staying overnight, you would flip through the channels and look at what's in the TV guide to find video. And that very much is a discovery metaphor as opposed to a search metaphor. The idea that I'm going to find video by typing in a couple of keywords to search back transcripts that someone manually typed in to find video is very broken. And what Aggregate Knowledge does is we provide a discovery engine that you can add to any website to enable discovery, which is user-generated editorial, user-generated merchandising of content by looking at the aggregate behavior of all the users who have gone before you. So we literally do the, if you like this, you're probably going to like that metaphor, which is a lot closer to what you do flipping through the channels on television as opposed to typing words into a search box, which we think is the wrong paradigm for search. So I think the, the, the search discovery dichotomy is a good one for us to use in trying to 
to get our, our hands around this rather slippery term. Um, let, me, let me ask another question. Um, given your definition, whether it's based on discovery or search uh, for video, where are we in the genealogy of technology? Where are we um, in terms of actually perfecting this video search? Are there a, a couple of uh, Stanford or ideally Berkeley graduate students in some garage somewhere who are going to come out on the market next year and revolutionize video search slash discovery? Or are we still at the very early stages of the unfolding of this particular technology? Paul, why don't I start with you and we'll go along. Sure. Uh, I think we're not only at the beginning, we're actually in front of the beginning. I don't think we fully yet understand what the use cases associated with video search or discovery are yet. No one, I think even on this panel, could probably enumerate the dozen most important use cases around it, as with search, traditional search 12 years ago, you couldn't enumerate the top 10 use cases. So since we don't fully understand what the human behavior associated with search and discovery is, it's very difficult to think that there are those two or three grad students sitting in a garage who actually have the answer. They may have the answer, but ironically, I would bet that they don't know that they have the answer because we haven't enumerated how it is that it's going to happen. And if we take a look at the way that offline metaphors for finding video have worked, that is going to be the key to determining how online metaphors, such as, hmm, I'm looking over at the video someone clip has someone on their iPod or whatever device it is there. Hmm, that looks pretty interesting. Maybe I'll get that too. That's a paradigm that I think is going to be very powerful forward going. Um, Paul, are you saying then that people don't know how to ask the question of what, what is video search? Yeah, no, I think, that that's a, I think that's a very fair statement. And when we talked prior to this panel about that, I think that's actually where a lot of the confusion is. If you just take lexically the words video and search and put them together, you go, well, there's going to be this box that you type a couple keywords into, and it's going to bring me videos back. That's the canonical definition. That's not really what I think of when I'm talking about video search. I'm talking about how did I find out about that TV show that's on Thursday nights at 9 o'clock, but I was watching another show, so I didn't know it existed or I wanted to forward a clip of my favorite American Idol singer last night to my friend. That's what video search is about, but when we just take it in the purely constructed way of a search box giving me back video clips, boy, I think we're really at the, before the beginning of the definition of video search, if that's what we're talking about. Well, in my mind, as a layperson in this debate, when I think of video search, I think in Google terms, and Google, of course, have conditioned us to think in their terms for Right. search. I think of being able to say or type or even video in some inf a question into a search engine and for that artificial intelligence to have the necessary algorithm to be able to give my answer back behind the piece of video right. or the pieces of video that I'm looking for. Um, Gian, am, am, I, uh, am I grossly um, optimistic and idealistic here? Am, am I imagining a technology that, that, that won't exist for a hundred years? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with uh, Paul. You know, I think uh, the video search is a very early stage. Um, but I think uh, this, this has been, I think, a challenge research topic for many years, actually. Um, but I think for some user case, um, what we are doing uh, in the fingerprinting technology area, uh, we do find a user case here. Uh, for example, use uh, fingerprinting. Fingerprinting is technology to e extract or generate, uh, we call a robust hash, hash code, or we call a visual code uh, from the video data, and which can identi uniquely identify this is, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the video data itself. Uh, so it's like uh, like a, 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 a DNA of the video. Um, so we could, uh, you can imagine, you, you know, if I have uh, my favorite video fingerprint and then I want to search for similar content, similar scenes, similar object, or you can define or, you know, similar, you know, actors. Um, so you can, you can use my reference fingerprint to find to search for similar content. So that's one way to use it. Another way to use it is to 
um, you know, content filtering. You know, we, you, we know that yesterday the Wycom sued one billion dollar against uh, YouTube, and so I think that's technology behind it. So basically, you the users upload the content, video content to the to the portals, and the content owner are requesting to filter the content to check if this uploaded content is a copyrighted material, and if it's copyrighted, is any agreement with content owner? Uh, so. That's another use of fingerprint and the, for content filtering. Uh, and, and we will talk about the, the legal, the copyright issues associated with, with video search, uh, I think, a little bit later in the conversation. Um, Tim, so um, are you my big hope here? Are you the only <laughs> optimist on the panel? Uh, well, I hope so. Um, so. So the question about where are we in, <clears throat> in the... Um, uh, down the road of video search, when are we going to have the tool that will allow us to find whatever we want, whenever we want? I, I, I think we're at the beginning, but we're not before the beginning. Um, just to be a little bit provocative here, Paul, you said that, um, that we don't even know what the use cases are yet, and we don't even know how we're going to use video search. A year ago, that was true. Today, there are hundreds of millions of people who, who find and watch videos every single day. There are billions of videos that are watched every single month. People go to sites like YouTube, they search, they browse, they type in keywords, they get recommendations, they get suggestions from their friends. So it is happening. And, and it is happening in a huge way today. From our perspective, on, from AOL, we see this traffic every day. And we've seen query volumes go up 30% month over month for the past six months, which, is, which means it's here. People are starting to use video search and the usage patterns are starting to evolve. The tools will certainly get better. I would say that for video search, we're about at the place where web search was in 1998, which is, if you remember, if you use Google in 1998, you typed in a search, a lot of the times you find what you want. Certainly there were plenty of times when you didn't find what you want. And users didn't really know how to use Google. They didn't know the procedure of refining keywords. They didn't know how, that you had to put things in quotes. They didn't know that they didn't know all the features. Today, people know how to use Google, and you can find whatever you want most of the time. Three, four years from now, I believe the same will be true for video search, and it's going to get gradually better um, over the next four years. The good news is if you look at the quality of video search today compared to a year ago or two years ago, it is significantly better than it was two years ago, and that trend is going to continue. So, Just, just to, for, for clarification for, for, for our audience's purpose, what exactly does AOL figure out in the video, and what can and can't it search for? So what, what AOL does and what, what most video search engines out there do, such as Yahoo or um, Pixie or, or Blinks and a handful of others, what we try to do is we get is we, first we try to find all of the videos on the, that are living on websites on the internet using these crawling technologies or using feeds. And then once we find those, we attempt to get as much metadata as we can, and the most widely used methods to do that are trying to get text that might be embedded in the video, text that might be located in the web page where that video lives, and um, in some cases, in very select cases, we use stream analysis or stream processing technology to try to do like voice recognition and things like that, but those are typically used on a very limited basis. So we take all that text, and then we combine that with um, all the information that when users interact with video and users watch video, things like user ratings and click counts and stuff like that. And we try to make it so that all the good video bubbles up the top and there's ways that you can search for it. Those are the, those are the techniques that we employ. Mark, um, 1998, is that fair? I mean, and, and of course, we're talking about search here versus discovery. You might, again, given the, I think you're a discovery guy rather than a search guy. Is that fair? Yeah, that's, that's a fair characterization. It's the first time I've heard it, but I'll, I'll go. Um, you know, I, th I think Tim points out very clearly sort of the difference in, in how folks are approaching this problem. Coming back to your example, I think if you look at, at, at the, the uh, internet or text-based search uh, paradigm, uh, certainly the technology at Google and elsewhere has, has improved uh, along with the user's interaction with that content. But I think there's a very key difference that helped move search technology to where it is today for text items, and that is that publishers of text content begin to understand how search engine optimization works. Yeah. So they understood the algorithm, and they could begin to contribute those key nuggets that would allow uh, their product, their, their text or their article, what have you, to move to the top of those rankings so it could be more easily found by the consumer. 
And so we've taken that same approach at GoToIt and said, wait a minute, the solution to video search and video discovery is not to apply processing power, speech to text, stream analysis, optical character recognition, facial recognition, et cetera. If you're, if you're working on interpreting the existing data set, you're working on a problem that, to your point earlier, will never be solved completely. And it's our view that to deliver a very, very good consumer application requires not a better understanding of the existing data set, but instead requires the producer and publisher of the video to engage in a process which wraps that video file in a new layer of metadata that with very great detail and granularity describes each and every element inside that video file such that the consumer can now find precisely with great relevancy and accuracy what he or she is most interested in, not somewhere in this 30 seconds plus or minus range, but precisely the frame where the activity they want to see begins and precisely the, the scene or activity uh, where it ends. So we've really come at it from a very, very different perspective, which is to empower the world's video publishers with a tool set that allows them to, to append a new layer of data to the such that it can be consumed in a very different way. And if you look at how video has evolved uh, through traditional broadcast mechanisms, satellite, cable television, broadcast television, DVD, et cetera, it's been a very much one-way, non-interactive medium. When you move that to broadband and mobile, you now have a two-way interactive medium, and, and, and the video has to catch up to that, thus becoming uh, non-linear and more personalized. And that's what this rich set of metadata and the player that we've created enables. Okay, so you, again, I think you're in the, the discovery, uh, excuse the pun, channel here. Uh, where are we in terms of the technology that you're, we're using or you're using? Are we in a, a mature stage, an early stage, or before the beginning of the beginning? Um, I say it's actually kind of irrelevant. You know, back to your original observation, you know, at garage days you were talking about. Um, you know, garage days are over. That's our philosophy. I, we believe the days of engineers sitting in a garage and creating the next search algorithm that blows Google away, those days are over. Um, if you look at the video search business today and look at the image search business today, um, you know, this is a, an activity that there's a tremendous appetite for. And people love searching for photos and videos. And the technology, I say across the board with all the different players, is all kind of so-so. It's all kind of B, B plus. You know, our technology we hope is as good as AOLs, which might be as good as Google's, which might be as good as MS. Uh, you know, or blinks or et cetera. So we all kind of are getting better. Our philosophy is over time, technology really is the commodity. Uh, over time, we're all getting better at video search. We're all getting better at image search. So what then? You know, what does that mean? So you know, our answer to that question is that it's he who's got the greatest reach, uh, he who's focused on distribution, he who's powering the most photo and video search across the web that ultimately has the most defendable business model. And that actually segues very into business models and money because after all this is not an academic discussion all you guys are in business you're all creating and selling products that generate revenue so we are where we are in terms of video slash discovery search for better or worse it's hard to tell but given that fact given we are where we are how are you guys making money today on your product, and how, of course, do you see this, this market evolving? Um, Chase, I know you're very much focused on the revenue side, and you have a, a lean and mean business. Perhaps you could talk about the, the revenue model, business, business models in this market. Yeah, so we, uh, we actually all come from the ad network business. So uh, we come from ValueClick and places like Tribal Fusion and Infospace and, and things like that. So you know, we focused really early, uh, day one, uh, on utilizing the ad network model in terms of our business model. So, you know, we are all about powering photo and video search and distributing thumbnails everywhere, uh, i.e. to website publishers. Uh, so our model for that is essentially uh, giving that to them uh, and either licensing it th to them uh, for a fee uh, or sharing in all the new ad revenue generated. The one thing really exciting about, you know, photo and video search is that all it's doing all day long is generating a ton of search activity and a ton of new ad revenue. So if you to websites, it's a, it's a really kind of compelling value proposition that you're bringing to them. So th that's what we're focused business model-wise. Mark? Yeah, not terribly dissimilar from, uh, from Chase and the folks at Pixie, but ours is a licensing model. 
where we license the GoToIt media platform to video publishers ranging from sports leagues, record labels, uh, media publishers, et cetera, to uh, uh, share in also the, uh, the revenue associated with that. So if you look at our solution, it does really two things. One is to create a compelling, personalized, nonlinear experience. And two, because we've now delineated uh, with great accuracy and precision each of the elements inside the video file, with a keyword describing it, we can target the video advertisement to appear at an appropriate slot uh, with appropriate targeting inside the video file. So we also do revenue sharing. Would you say then that the discovery and search have inherently different business models? I think so. You know, our business is not predicated on on the number of searches we can generate and the number of, of words we can list next to that search. Ours is really predicated on the idea that we can maximize the value of that video asset that the publisher has created. So by differentiating the product across platform, by enabling one universal data set to travel with the video file across broadband, mobile, and cable, to allow for a new experience and perhaps even derivative works to be created. Uh, for product definition, not a legal definition, uh, it, it really enables a, a new set of businesses to be created versus just a search business. So Tim, as, as uh, the, the closest thing to the, the orthodox defender of the, the search faith on this panel, um, are you following the same business model as, say, Google with your search product? So <clears throat> um, we are following similar business models. So, so as you point out, so Google makes a amount of money on advertising, contextual advertising alongside web search, um, the, the largest segment of the online advertising industry right now, billions and billions of dollars. If you take that same ad model, you take the same ad inventory that they have and you try to apply it to a video search engine, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. There's not enough, um, you cannot contextually match the type of ads that show up in web search to the types of queries that people run in video search and get any significant click-through rate. And, and certainly every, anyone in the video search business who's tried that knows that. Um, so what, we're, what we do instead is we do a combination of things today to monetize advertising. So we, we do things like sponsorships, we do things like paid inclusion, we do display advertising, which is, um, has, which is surprisingly effective, and obviously things like um, video advertising, either rich media. And we use a combination, and I would characterize it right now as we're in a phase of experimentation. Which is a euphemism for what? Meaning a euphemism for somebody at some point in the future is going to be making a lot of money <laughs> off of video search, but the, at the model that will support that, I don't think it's been invented yet. But presumably there are senior people within AOL who think that this could be a, uh, whatever the word is, a golden tur uh, no, no, what is it, a, what's the word, a golden goose? Golden, golden goose, the thing that will, <laughs> that will put AOL back over uh, Microsoft and, and Google. Not even, not just, not only inside of AOL, but if you look at what's happening inside of Google right now, look at what's happening inside of Yahoo. 2007 is a year where everybody is experimenting with new advertising models, both related to consumption of online video as well as video search. And in, in the next couple of years, I think there's a good bet that one of them is going to stick, and it will provide very relevant advertising alongside video search results, alongside videos that you're watching, and that will be a huge opportunity for advertising. Uh, you have a different kind of product. You've got a security product. How are you monetizing that? Right. So we have a totally different business model. So we uh, license our technologies to uh, to content owners to enable them to search for unauthorized copyright material on the internet. We also license our technology to a company like YouTube or Google um, to clean up their networks to find unauthorized, you know, copyright material. Network, so they can clean up and uh, uh, free of liability. Um, another business model we are considering considering now is to uh, provide a service to uh, to content owners. Um, so basically, that's kind of a global fingerprint database. So every time you you know uploading or transfer the content, video data, you check the database. You have a permission to do it, so this kind of service model. Um, and uh, Paul, mm -hmm. uh, from the discovery point of view, do you share uh, Chase and Mark's business model? 
No, actually, our business model is uh, very simple and different than everyone's on this panel. It's a completely pay for performance model. So the people who use our product, if you want more page views per session, if you want more product sales per visit, if you want uh, more items discovered in any given session, we get attached directly to the RI piece and only get paid if we work for you. That model's been very successful because we only get paid when we deliver real ROI results to our customers, as opposed to just having, say, a feature that you hope works. Final question, and then we'll, we'll open it up to the audience. Um, apart from your own product, w w where would you point the audience to, a, to an example of video search which is impressive or interesting? Um, Paul, do you want to start? Uh, well, I, I guess one I would talk about is uh, a friend of mine, Mary Hodder, has a company called Dabble, and her model whereby people to some extent talk about a scene in a show, and I, I can't say I'm familiar with Mark's product, but I have to imagine that he does some of this as well, talk about the scene that you were interested in and a direct reference to it, and the social aspect of sharing it in the context of, hey, let's comment on that, or did you see what so-and-so was wearing in the clip? I, I see a, a lot of what Dabble is very interesting. Right. Mary Hodder is at Dabble, she's a friend of mine. Her company is based in Berkeley, and actually I'm doing another of these kind of conversations for anyone based in the Bay Area at the end of March at Berkeley's uh, Cyber Salon, in which uh, Mary will be a speaker. Uh, Jen, uh, apart from, from your product, what, what have you seen that really impresses you? Um, I see the, um, I think the, as mentioned, uh, all the panelists, uh, one of the problems for video search is uh, how to, uh, for, the, for the consumers, how to express their wish, uh, what they want to have. It's, well, it's a very hard topic, usability issue, and how to express my wish for search something. So it's very difficult to do. Um, so I don't have any, I don't see any really easy to use user interface can, uh, you know, clearly express my wish for, for video search. Well, I like, I like the search engine that we built, but I can't <laughs> say that. Isn't it? Which so, one? Well, <clears throat> like AOL, it's Truvio. Um, so, so other search engines that um, search products. Well, I like I like my TiVo. I like how that works, and I, I wish it. Which works. one's that? Could you say it louder? TiVo. I like okay, my TiVo. TiVo. Um, I also like the product that Stumble Upon, uh, Stumble Video, right. which is which is um, more of a, a browsing, or it's a very it's a unique way to video. You stumble upon it. Um, so those are two. Mark. Yeah, uh, just quickly on Paul's point, uh, Paul, though you don't know it, uh, you've described it very well. Uh, late last year, we launched a, an application called SceneMaker, uh, a web-based application that allows you to create the metadata for a piece of video you find on uh, any UGC video site where you can describe with great precision what you find interesting from last night's OC, what have you, and then uh, discuss that in the social community. Uh, but in terms of what I find interesting out there, I think some of the, the uh, things uh, that we will see from the folks over at Sling Media are, are quite interesting. Uh, it's a bit early. Uh, if you were at CES, they demonstrated uh, a very early prototype of their Clip and Sling product, uh, and I think that sort of video discovery will continue to, uh, to gain momentum in the market. Interesting that both you and Tim referred to hardware products. Um, uh, uh, this is actually a, a, it requires hardware, but it's a software-based Right, product. well, maybe the coming together of the two for this particularly you know, tricky enterprise. And finally, Chase? Uh, no one's doing a good job. Just kidding. There's a, um, like I said, everyone, everyone's doing kind of a, I think a, a, a pretty decent job. Everyone's doing a B, B plus job. You know, Yahoo, Google, you know, MSN. We've, I've named a bunch of companies before. I actually think um, AOL Video guys of, of, all, the, of all the big companies uh, are really some of the smarter guys in, in the video space, uh, with, especially with their search video product where they're exposing APIs and letting people kind of play with uh, media content. I'll pay you later after. I'll give you, you that money was a, after. That was a paid endorsement. Well, right, well, what about questions from the audience? Questions? Going once? They want to get lunch. Yeah. It happens when you run five minutes late. They want lunch. There we go. One brave soul. Oh, there is one at the back. <laughs> one brave soul, and then it's lunchtime. Hi, Mark. Hi. Held Entertainment, I need to find a video discovery slash search solution, and so I'm trying to figure out which one of you
people will be the best, will, will be my date at the dance, so to speak. Um, who, can any of you talk about a customer, a current customer that you have now who's experiencing fantastic results using your technology? AOL guy, you don't need to respond. Great, great question. Yeah, I'm happy to speak about uh, two customers that we've publicly announced. Uh, the first is in the broadband space in a partnership with uh, Major League Soccer, uh, the U.S. Professional Soccer League, where we're taking post-broadcast video, uh, enhancing it with a, a very descriptive set of metadata, and then giving the consumer the ability to navigate to whatever he or she is most interested inside that game. So you can, you can watch just the goals, you can watch just the saves, set pieces, what have you, if you want to the, uh, the moments involving your favorite player, you can do that all by sorting the metadata uh, associated with the file. There's only ever one single video file, and the consumer has the ability to navigate, interact within that content uh, based on the metadata applied to it. The second example, also a sports example, uh, is a product we built with uh, Sprint on their mobile handsets uh, with the National Football League. It's the world's first ever video fantasy football product. It allows you, again, using a very rich layer of metadata to see every play from every player game every week of the NFL season uh, with instant access from your Sprint mobile handset. And so I think those are two very good examples of content publishers, in this case both sports leagues, who, who've seen the value of enhancing their, their on-demand video products with a very rich layer of metadata, A, to create new and differentiated products, and B, to drive new revenue from them. So very quickly, um, if you're looking for a video search product, we have a free set of APIs and tools that you can find at developer.awl.com. Those are used by hundreds of developers to power video search on their site. People use it to build flash widgets that you can share video search results. People use it to very power extremely large websites, such as, uh, such as Windows Live Search, or uh, Windows Media, or Real Networks, or Brightcove, or these are all uh, Time Warner Cable. These are all companies that use our search engine every day on their site, but there's also hundreds of smaller ones that use it, um, sites like NetVibes, or or you know, you can see them just about everywhere. I, if you're interested in putting it on your own site, I encourage you to check it out. You can use it for free. You can sign up online. Just go to developer.aol.com, and and the APIs are there, and you can use them as much as you want. So, so there are people using it. And I hope you find it useful. Anyone else? Oh, sure. Uh, Martin Lopez Cardozo, Tamberg Television. So, I mean the. Uh, these technologies are all very cool, and I'm sure they work very well. Um, but it seems like all of you guys are addressing basically the broadband TV, to lesser extent, the mobile market. If you would assume that you know over 90% of TV viewing will still take place based on you know a service provider offering, what are your guys' plans to incorporate some of these really cool solutions? So if I have Time Warner or Comcast or Verizon, and actually works with my set-top box. Right. Uh, uh, our service, for example, we are agnostic to the delivery mechanism. We're working with set-top boxes, point-of-sale devices, mobile, it doesn't matter. Uh, wherever the content is being consumed, we can add our layer of people who bought this, bought that, people who watched this, watched that. And we actually believe that those non-traditional areas will be some of the largest areas of growth, just as the social networking page views are larger growth than current traditional media. Uh, so I think any solution has to be agnostic to both the content to which you're recommending or discovering to the pipe by which it's delivered. Yeah, and I, I would echo those same thoughts. Uh, it, it is not a broadband-only solution. Uh, at GoToIt, we very much focused on having a multi-platform solution for our media pro uh, publishing partners. And you know, we've been live in Time Warner and Comcast cable markets for, for a handful of years. It's only about a million homes uh, targeted primarily in the Northeast United States uh, delivering enhanced on-demand video products. And in every case, there's empirical data about that period that suggests uh, that consumers are more engaged, stay longer, and watch more uh, when you give them the ability to simply and easily get to what they want. So you know, you'll probably see more of it in, in the coming months and years uh, coming into a multi-platform approach as the service provider themselves morph from having been simply a video provider to video voice data and, and soon wireless services. I think we have time for about one more question. We're cutting into lunch here. So anybody else? Yes, that will do it. Uh, remember to buy the DVDs if you're watching this at home, www.mediaarchives.com.
Thank you. I think it was a great panel. Thanks very much. Thank you.